Hello children, I hope you are doing well today. So let's get started with our next lesson, Mesopotamia and Agriculture. So children, here we have the learning objectives. Let us see the learning objectives. We need to analyze the reason for the Sumerians settling in Mesopotamia. We need to explore the importance of agriculture and domestication to the ancient civilizations. When you see the UAE link children, UAE has a reference of classical civilization. When we were, we have done the lesson children and we have come across uh, the soldiers of King Alexander. And he had mentioned about the people in the Gulf region as fish eaters. Next is the cross-curricular link and that surely links with history. As the topic deals with the ancient civilization of the Sumerians who settled in the region of Mesopotamia. So here we have the introduction children. Just a simple question, how is the river a blessing to early civilizations? Why did the early civilizations flourish on the river banks? So can you just give me the reasons for it? Please note it down in your notebooks, children. Now this region of Mesopotamia, children, was called as the Fertile Crescent. And why it was called as a Fertile Crescent? because it was between these two rivers of Tigris and Euphrates. You can see this in the map, children. Now, when you have the regions very close to the river, obviously that region is rich in soil. It is very fertile. It is good for the cultivation of the crops. So obviously, children, when food was available in this region, so the civilization has to flourish over here. So that gave birth to the civilization. And this Sumerian civilization in Mesopotamia was the first major civilization. Present day Mesopotamia is the region of Iraq and Syria. Now for the reason for having the civilization flourished on the banks of Euphrates and Tigris River, known as the Fertile Crescent, because it had the shape of a crescent moon, a C-shaped, because of the systematic farming children over there. Now, you can see the points over here, that agriculture was required, and the agriculture required, the big biggest requirement was the water supply. How should the water be supplied? Not too much that the standing crops will just fall off and not too less that there won't be any cultivation. So it should be at a consistent level. Next thing is that people in Mesopotamia, they had developed an excellent system of drainage. Then irrigation facilities were provided by them. Next is the careful farming methods. So that played a very significant role, children. And that brought about the progress in their population, in their civilization. And that's the reason this was said to be the biggest or the major civilization. Because they were quite systematic in their farming. So here, children, you can see the domestication of the animals and the Sumerians with the people, those who lived in the south of Mesopotamia, were too much into this domestication of the animals. That is, taming the animal for their needs. And they were believed to be the first farmers also. Uh, they were the people who were, for the first time, cultivated the wheat. They were the people who, for the first time, domesticated the, the animals like goats. And they domesticated the animals and with the domesticated animals, they could get the meat, the milk, the hide. The hide is nothing, children, but that is the skin of the animal, which is treated and made into a hide so that various kinds of things could be made out of it. 
and later these animals were used for farming purposes as well as for traveling from one place to another Now, children, here we have the development of the barter system or the barter trade. As you can see in the pic over here, you can see a person giving a grain and getting the apples in return. Okay. Now, domestication helped the people, so they could grow more food. And at the same place, they didn't go to any other place like earlier. They were nomads, kept on moving in search of food. and search of animals for hunting and fulfilling their needs so domestication brought about that okay now they have to be at one particular place because they were taking care of their farms and fields so a settled life was required and then the population also started increasing because they had good production of food the second next thing is that children uh, over here when you have excess food or Access uh, this um, height, obviously. Then you can think about trading. So over here, the same thing happened with these Sumerians. They had extra food. They had hide with them. So they wanted to trade with the people of the other villages, and in return, they got the things what they needed. so uh, children as this slide is giving you a complete information about the stable food supply and how was that possible that was only possible because of these four things first is the irrigation system the water availability uh, to the farms and fields around the year obviously brought about a good yield bumper crops and the uh, next thing was that it was a fertile crescent obviously children the region was rich in soil the quality of soil was really good so that gave them good yield third thing was the plowing children they started with plowing the fields that is uh, they started loosening the soil so that you know the crops can grow well earlier they used to do it with the animal bones they used to keep on poking it on the ground but over the time then they learned this technique that how the blade could be used and we could lose in the soil with the help of the plows next thing is the use of the oxen so earlier they were doing it by their hand and then they thought that why not involve the beast so over here it is the oxen and this animal was employed on the farms and fields so that the uh, farms could be the soil could be loosed in on those farms now children uh, there was definitely a shift and a shift from the hunter gatherers to the farmers and that shift brought about a settled life so uh, the society also started growing from a very simple to slowly to a complex society now you can see over here in the uh, pyramid which has been go given over here there's a hierarchy children so different roles started get getting evolved evolved means started growing so there were farmers taking uh, like growing the crops and taking care of the cattle then uh, there were some people who were protecting the uh, settlements so it it is the king uh, king soldiers taking care of the uh, region of the uh, place then uh, uh, the managing the huge big groups that is the administration so over here you can see the king okay so the king and his subjects the priest were used for religious purposes and in this manner slowly and steadily the society which was a very simple society which was based on agriculture slowly and steadily there were various occupations evolving out of it over a period of time so that the region becomes completely self sufficient so here we come to the research work children i want you to do a bit of research so you have to make a list of all those animals domesticated by man okay and how those animals were useful to man
Next is bit of a classwork children in which you have to take certain colored pencils with you and there is a map children you have to trace out that map which is in your textbook so please do it in your textbook it's a textbook work so here children we have the match the words activity in which the words have been given and i have matched it for you Now activity two children, uh, what two water bodies the fertile crescent had and how did that help people trade extra food for other products? Now this question is your textual question children. So this is what I have uh, felt that these are the three important points which we need to mention. What are the two water bodies? Obviously are the rivers uh, Tigris and Euphrates. Then how did it help the people trade extra food for other products? Because the river made the region of Mesopotamia very fertile. Due to the silt. And silt is the deposition of uh, the fine fertile soil. And this is deposited by the river at the river banks as it keeps flowing. And when you have the floods children during that time the water breaks the banks and comes on the surface and moves to a huge big region. And while it is while the flood water is moving on to the land it is also carrying along with it the silt and that get, gets scattered or spread over a large distance making the region a fertile region making the soil rich and when the water goes down that is the flood water goes down the silt is left behind now this region wherein you have continuously the floods every year, year after year, especially during the time when you have the monsoons. So it leads to the formation of the flood plains and that is very good for the growth of the crops. Then when these extra grains were there, obviously they need to be traded. If they are just kept at one place, children, it is not going to yield you any benefit and it might spoil over a period of time so they started trading it so they traded their extra grains for the hides or for the pottery or for the so children here we have activity three domestication of the dogs and what were the reasons for it so i have put up the reasons over here what i felt was important now if you can think of some more uh, reasons of domestication of dogs you are most welcome to add those points in so children uh, here we have activity four in which we have the first row Uh, so children here we have the critical thinking question you can go through this question it's a textual a textual question and uh, please give your thoughts in the notebook are zoos good for animals and people if yes okay. so children here we come to the end of our lesson thank you so much for watching my channel if you really liked it then please like and share and don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon. See you. Bye-bye.